So, it's been some time since the DJI Mini 3 Pro came out and this is one of the best, if not the best drone that I've ever flown. I mean, it's so small and compact and only weighs 249 grams. And with the new RC controller with the built-in screen, it's just the perfect combo. At least, that's my opinion. So today I want to share my top 5 features of this drone and why I like these so much. Now for those of you that don't know, I took this on a 6 week trip to Hawaii to test and review it and to see if this would be a better travel drone for me. So the first feature I want to talk about is the photos, the photo mode, the ability to shoot extremely high quality awesome photos. I mean, this drone can shoot 48 megapixel photos, JPEG and RAW. How cool is that? That is just insane. And being able to take high-res photos from such a small drone is something I've personally never experienced. And I was so happy about the photos that I took that I even sent a few of them for print. These are now hanging around in the house and I think that speaks for itself. And not only is this allowing you to take amazing photos, but it also allows you to take vertical photos and videos which brings us over to the second feature, the vertical mode. Either you hate this or you love it. The vertical shooting mode on the DJI Mini 3 Pro is fantastic. It was one of my most used aspects on the trip to Hawaii. So driving around the island of Oahu and hiking the tropical forest, I always finished every session with the drone with vertical videos and photos. After recording my normal videos, with just a tap of a button, the gimbal rotated into vertical mode and I could take some crispy photos and videos for Instagram. I mean... I think this is amazing, considering the size of this drone and how portable it is. And to me, this saved me a lot of time when editing the photos and videos in post-production. And also with the 60 degree upwards tilting, I managed to capture some pretty nice shots that I'm really happy about. I even managed to capture the sunrise and the moon in one of the same shots. So to me, the vertical mode is something that I didn't think I would like. But after testing it out, I found myself using it more and more. And I just love it. I use it every single time I'm out flying with the Mini 3. And I think it's the perfect addition to this drone. And for those that like to shoot vertical videos to post on Instagram, you can also record these videos in 4K HDR 10-bit in the Cinelike. Which brings us over to the next and the third feature, the camera. The Mini 3 Pro has an outstanding camera, which can shoot 4K 60 and 10-bit HDR in 24, 25 and 30 FPS using the d like color profile. The HDR video coming from this is so good. I like to record all my drone footage in 4K 60 to add that 40% slow motion for cinematic purposes, but on this drone, I've only used 4K60 a few times. This was basically just to test it out and see the results. And uh, I found myself using 4K HDR 30fps more. So the settings that I used to record all the videos that I recorded in Hawaii was basically 4K HDR at 30fps. 30fps still gave me some room to work with and I could slow it down to 80% just to smooth it out a little bit more. Now, instead of me talking about how good this camera actually is, let me show you a 20 to 30 second sequence here where everything is shot in 4K HDR at 30 FPS. Now to me that looks so good. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the quality coming from this tiny DJI Mini 3 Pro. Now 
since there's a lot of mountains and trees around the area I was flying, including Wi-Fi signals coming from people in houses, I didn't really experience any signal issues though. The only time I experienced issues was when I was doing that typical range test video. So the fourth feature or the fourth reason is the RC controller, the brand new RC controller with the built-in screen. Now, over the past three months, there has been some people complaining about the RC signal and that the signal won't last longer than a few hundred meters or signal strength has weakened around 300 meter or so. Now, this was a common issue with this drone when it first came out, but with recent firmware updates, it seems to have fixed most of it. But if you make sure that your controller is always pointed in the direction of where your drone's at, the signal will be much more stable. Now for me personally, I've never experienced any issues when actually using this drone for work. It was only when I made the range test video where I was flying in different areas. And if you want to get a better understanding of the range test that I did and if you want to check it out, where I fly in different places with a lot of Wi-Fi as well as the typical beachfront and places where there's no interferences, I will leave the test video down in the description below. For me, the RC controller itself is also one of the reasons that I love this drone so much. The controller is super light, it barely has any weight to it, and it has the built-in screen which makes the overall experience better. It only takes about 15 seconds to get going from when you turn on the drone and controller until they're linked together before you can start flying. It takes a bit longer before the satellites kick in though, uh, but a pro tip here is if you're in a rush to catch a sunrise or sunset or anything like that, is to push it straight into the air once it's connected and ready to fly. Once you're up in the air, the drone is further away from any interferences and the satellites will kick in faster. Now, the RC controller also has a spot for an SD card in case you want to record your screen or anything like that. And this was actually my lifesaver when we were out doing a few hikes. I was so obsessed with getting the shots I needed and I basically forgot to look at the storage. I felt like a complete beginner. I only brought the Insta360 GO 2 and my Sony camera and no spare SD cards at all. But luckily, I had an empty card in the RC controller, which I could easily switch. It's a minor feature, but something I'm glad for. It really saved our hike, especially when it comes to flying the Mini 3 to gather some aerial shots. It really saved that day. So after swapping out the full SD card, we took a different route and found some really cool trails and smaller waterfalls. And here's where the obstacle avoidance kicked in as our fifth feature for this video. Now, obstacle avoidance is something we've had for years and it's not a new thing at all. So having the obstacle avoidance system, oh man, it actually saved me sometimes from crashing the treetops and hitting rocks when flying super low to the ground. This was also something I mentioned in my pre-launch video and I'm so grateful they put tri-directional obstacle sensing in this drone. And after using it for a few times, I started to see more ways of taking advantage of these sensors to get shots I normally wouldn't risk taking, especially being on an island with only the Mini 3 in stock. I already had the Mini 2 and I barely used it. So I didn't want to risk everything and I'm so glad that I had the obstacle avoidance sensors. Now, even though the obstacle avoidance is an old thing, Having this in a mini, which weighs less than 250 grams, makes it the perfect companion for every travel to come, especially for me. I don't know about you, but for me, this is the perfect drone. There's, of course, many other features I would love to talk about in this video, but I'm not going to cover everything today. That might be for a different separate video. So these are my most lovable features with the DJI Mini 3 Pro and the features I actually used for six weeks when taking this drone on a proper trip. Not just to make a review, but to actually use it the way it's supposed to be used. So I can honestly say that the Mini 3 is my all time favorite drone up until now. I skipped the Mavic 3 and I'm glad I put my money into this instead. So to me, the DJI Mini 3 Pro is a must-have drone for any travelers. Or if you're just looking into getting a new hobby, the DJI Mini 3 Pro would be the perfect drone to start with. Now, let me know in the comments below, do you already have the Mini 3? And if you do, where have you been taking it so far? 
So I hope you enjoyed this travel features type of review or more of an update after using it for almost four months now. And if you did, make sure to subscribe for more. We also have the DJI avatar coming in pretty soon as well. And I'm so excited to see how that turns out. So until next time, take care and I will see you soon. Ha <laughs> ha